So to Anfield we go. 44,000 people await the kickoff. The stakes are high and the atmosphere bordering on the frenetic. Your commentator is John Motson. A packed stadium, a familiar sight at Anfield this season. And this has been a happy hunting ground for Manchester United in recent years. They haven't lost a league match here since Boxing Day 1979. So Peter Beardsley, who once played briefly for United, returns to the Liverpool starting lineup, knowing that if they can end that eight and a half year jinx today, it would definitely put them within one further victory of the championship. Ray Houghton is also back in what's normally regarded now as Liverpool's best available lineup. Kenny Dalglish makes himself one of the substitutes. As for United, they have Steve Bruce back in defence after a one-match suspension. He replaces Graham Hogg and Norman Whiteside, whose transfer request will probably be discussed by the United board tomorrow, returns only as a substitute. But Norman's role as United folk hero could be challenged now by Brian McClare. He needs just one goal to become the first United player to score 20 league goals in a season since George Best exactly 20 years ago. Referee John Key of Rotherham starts the match in perfect playing conditions on a quite beautiful bank holiday afternoon. Steve Nicol for Liverpool. Looks for Houghton. That was Blackmore number three. That's a free kick. Clayton Blackmore, the Welsh international, playing left back for Manchester United. Colin Gibson, this is Spackman for Liverpool, touched off nicely by Houghton, who got it back. On by Beardsley, Paul McGrath is number five. Recently come back after a long absence with knee operations. That's Houghton. The play sandwiched in this corner of the pitch, Gary Gillespie. Aldridge up, away by McGrath to Strachan. Number six is Duxbury. Strachan again. Could be one or two tasty tackles going in this afternoon. There's so much uh, history between these famous teams. Here's Nigel Spackman, and here's Beardsley in space. This is Barnes. Crowded out. they've shared many great battles over the last few seasons that was Brian McClare and here's Peter Davenport against Alan Hansen and Davenport's beaten him and Brian Robson's in the middle and Manchester United take the lead on a ground where they tend to do so well and the England captain timed his run and arrived there virtually on his own but the man who takes credit early in the move is McClare because he got the ball moving for United and put Davenport away. Davenport beat Hanson, there was no question about that. And when he crossed, Brian Robson had an easy chance by his standards. Only the third minute, and Liverpool, who lost last Saturday at Forest, go a goal down here this afternoon. What a simple goal in the end. But good build-up play by the United strikers. Put up, McMahon on Robson. Referee says play on. Cross by Beardsley. It's worth pointing out that uh, in this all-conquering season of Liverpool's, Manchester United themselves have lost only five league games up to now. Here's Houghton for the leaders to Beardsley. Could be on to the left, Ablett, too long for Aldridge, and Nickel Handball. Gordon Strachan. So, Brian McClare on the ball, Manchester United lead 1-0. 
Gibson's made his way forward in this attack. Here's Duxbury. Trying to find Davenport, but it was not going to go through there. Oh, good triangular play that by Liverpool. Beardsley, McGrath's challenge, still Beardsley, looking for Nickel. Aldridge coming in, Steve Bruce made a strong and determined challenge on John Aldridge, and the referee decided it was his final touch, so it's a corner. Gillespie's there. This time it's a goal kick. prepared to make a run, so too is Houghton behind the fullback. Aldridge and Barnes waiting in the centre. McGrath again. Corner. Houghton couldn't reach the two players waiting. Gillespie on the six-yard line. Aldridge nearly on the goal line. And Aldridge gets there. In goes Gillespie and Spackman. And Gillespie. And the goalkeeper didn't quite know what day it was for a moment or two there, Chris Turner, but as it bobbled about, his defenders were there in force and Gary Gillespie was thwarted. Barnes. Good cross. It's going to come to Houghton. Didn't control it first time. And Manchester United living dangerously, but happy to survive and break out with Strachan. Viv Anderson's made a run down the right wing. Here's McClare. There's Anderson. And there's McClare getting in behind Hansen. Five waiting in the centre for Manchester United here. Putter. McMahon and Duxbury having the altercation. And referee John Key having the presence to get in there quickly. With Anderson joining in, which uh, <laughs> he sometimes tends to do. It's a free kick to United, and Anderson has taken his position now by the penalty spot. Oof. That was uh, Houghton catching Blackmore, and uh, Manchester United, for the moment, having a little spell in the ascendancy. Gibson's going to take the free kick. Anderson is in there. That's a goal kick. Just looking back on that last 60 seconds, there was a chance of a goal at either end. Uh, Liverpool had quite a scramble underneath Chris Turner's crossbar, or in his six-yard box anyway. And then when Manchester United broke out, there was a moment when you thought McClare and Anderson were going to go clean through. All good, exciting stuff for the spectator. The score stays 1-0. Now Aldridge to Houghton. Oh, he's got away from Brian Robson. He needs support in the middle. Beardsley's arriving now. Beardsley! 1-1. One, one. And Liverpool's strike. Eight minutes before half-time. Houghton got away down the right. And for once, it was Manchester United who were undermanned at the back. When the cross came in, Beardsley returning like Houghton 
into the starting lineup this afternoon, clipped a crisp shot right in the bottom corner and made it 1-1. From good approach play by the other returning forward, Ray Howell. Well, it was 1 1 at Old Trafford back in November, and it's 1 1 at the moment at Anfield today. Kick. It's all going Liverpool's way in this spell. McGrath penalised. Five minutes left in the first half. Houghton to take the kick as Gillespie makes his way forward. Ablett's coming in from the far side. Nickel. Oh, Beardsley away from Robson. Barnes, Gillespie! This is vintage stuff now from Liverpool. And Brian Robson, who scored Manchester United's goal, found himself bypassed again. Put back across, John Barnes intelligent enough to play that ball back where it should have gone. And Gary Gillespie tall enough and aware enough to apply the finishing header after 41 minutes. Peter Beardsley makes his influence tell again and Liverpool from being a goal behind have now scored twice in the space of four minutes. Alan Hansen, a poor header. That's Gibson. loving this oh, didn't like that so much though Steve Bruce just clattering in he's just come back actually from a one match suspension uh, Steve Bruce well, Manchester United must be wondering just what hit them in those four or five minutes minute of the first half, Liverpool 2, Manchester United 1, Beardsley, free kick given, he was uh, fouled, it was Bruce again, Barnes and Ablett standing near to the ball for Liverpool, Gillespie's making a little run across again, here comes Steve Nicol, Colin Gibson has to concede, committed himself and was beaten and he knew it here's Beardsley Peter Beardsley turning events after 38 minutes with an equaliser which cancelled out the Manchester United opening goal. And then as Liverpool applied the pressure where it mattered, only three minutes later, Gillespie had them 2-1 up. Good stuff and Liverpool showing their mettle. There are some fixtures on the first division calendar that always seem to guarantee a gripping game and the meeting of these two, normally among them, so far this year, no complaints. United now attacking the cop end. 2-1 behind. Despite the sterling efforts of this man, McGrath, in defence for the first half hour anyway. It's 
versus Davenport. Steve Nicol becoming a great favourite here. Had a fine season. He's got Houghton on that side as well. And there are three waiting in the middle for a cross. Four now counting Nicol. Got a foot in again. McMahon. McMahon! Oh, I say. That's got to be one of the best goals of the season, even by Liverpool standards. What a belter. Manchester United hang their heads because they failed to clear the ball, it should be said, when they should have done. But don't take anything away from Steve McMahon. He picked that up, saw what was on, and thumped that beyond a despairing turner. Two minutes into the second half, and Liverpool may have put the game beyond Manchester United's reach. And the England midfield player gives the England manager, perhaps, another gentle nudge. Not that he needs it, because uh, Bobby Robson's already picked him. Here's Beardsley. You have to talk also as McMahon takes the credit, and rightly so from the cop, about the way that Steve Nichol figured in that earlier build-up on that right-hand side. Manchester United were always looking stretched in that Liverpool attack. Now a double substitution by Manchester United as Alec Ferguson decides the only way to do this is to change it completely. Norman Whiteside, number 12. Jesper Olsen, number 14, are coming on and Mike Duxbury and Clayton Blackmore are going off. And that would seem to me to mean that Colin Gibson must now play left-back. Whiteside's gone into midfield and Olsen into a wider position. And Gibson is now penalised and is playing left-back. And it's a sign of Manchester United's frustration with the way things have gone. But it's a booking that, in all honesty, he had no need to pick up there. The decision had been given. Here comes Barnes, away by Bruce. Olsen. Foot up, was it? No, play on to the referee. And a good interception by Gibson. Well played by Gillespie too. This is Houghton for Liverpool. What good play again that was. Aldridge setting up Barnes and he finds Abbott. Tempers getting rather afraid now. Did Anderson this time involved? Here's Ablett. Robson. Davenport. to Gibson. Oh. Well, there have been times when Manchester United have been their own worst enemies. And Gibson has already been booked for kicking the ball away. What does the referee do now? Well, I can only think that Colin Gibson is in deep trouble. John Key has already shown him the yellow card and that's got to be red. Gibson, who's had something of a chequered career in the disciplinary sector, is dismissed for two bookable offences. John Key applying the letter of the law. He'd already shown him the yellow card, and Gibson has to go. Hook 
Manchester United's cause not one little bit. Well, supporting Manchester United sometimes is rather like being on a seesaw. They do tend to extend the full range of emotions. And after starting so well here today, they're now in the sort of position that Liverpool are ready made to exploit. Here's McMahon. Off, dear me, Norman Whiteside. Whiteside leaves his mark on an opponent. And Manchester United seem to be in danger of losing their discipline completely. Yellow card for Whiteside. fit enough to get a shot in. straight to Houghton and now Steve Nicholl is up on the right wing as he has been so often three waiting in the middle for a cross lofted towards Aldridge here Turner just got to it just stretched down by the post good effort by Aldridge right side and Robson Showing a bit of presence in the midfield this last quarter of an hour. Stem the tide rather. The flag's up on the far side for an offside decision. McGrath's <laughs> headed. Olsen. Strachan making a lovely run through the middle, he's onside, Gordon Strachan with a chance to equalise, and does! What a turner! The ten men have come back from 3-1 down to 3-3. Davenport put him through, the Liverpool defence was square, they queried the linesman who kept his flag down, and Strachan kept his cool. 
A nice tidy finish on 78 minutes. And the score in what is developing now into one of the matches of the season is Liverpool 3, Manchester United 3, and Liverpool decide to bring off John Aldridge and put on Craig Johnston. Well, when Gibson was sent off and Whiteside was booked and Manchester United looked dishevelled at 3-1 down, what odds would you have got, I wonder, for a recovery like this? just something about playing here that seems to make them lift themselves when it matters. Nickel for Liverpool. They'll be regretting now the chance that Aldridge missed uh, from Nickel's cross when it could have been 4-2. And Olsen makes a break for Manchester United here. Whiteside's cross, Davenport's coming in. And United actually believe they can win it. McMahon Johnston's down the left wing McMahon cuts inside Strachan Beardsley comes towards him Johnston it needs to be laid off it's a free kick Anderson on Johnston Three minutes to go, free kick to Liverpool. To be taken by Barnes, or, yes. Gillespie's in there, what a great save by Turner. Well, Chris Turner made a save there, going to his left from Gary Gillespie's header, that could well have given Manchester United a hard-earned point and denied Liverpool too. What a sizzling match. Three each. Gary Gillespie scores for Liverpool and deflects Robson's shot into the net for the goal that put Manchester United back in business. Only with ten men having had Gibson sent off, they came back to three all thanks to Strachan's equaliser and reminded Liverpool on this ground where they always seem to do well, United, that the championship still can't be taken for granted. Nevertheless, a fine match. Liverpool at one point, 3-1 up, thanks to Beardsley, Gillespie and McMahon. But football is an unpredictable game and thank goodness it still throws up this kind of occasion with so much to enjoy. Liverpool 3, Manchester United 3. Well, a superb 90 minutes of instant drama and breathtaking spectacle with so much to commend it. More of that in a moment, but first I can't let Norman Whiteside's yellow car defence pass without comment. To be fair, it was Norman's determination and rugged contribution when he came on as substitute that turned the game. But he must learn quickly that cold-blooded aggression cannot be allowed to succeed. It can be seen clearly that the stamp on McMahon's ankle was premeditated and cameras really destroy any protestations of innocence. It's a man's game, it's true, but also all professionals depend upon it for their living. Well, I don't want to leave that fine game on a harsh note, so may I reprise for you the move leading up to Liverpool's first goal, which epitomised perfectly their strengths. First of all, the capacity for running into position and playing the ball off first time simply. This clearance, picked up in the air, but a 30-yard, well, 20-yard header back and a lovely left foot volley, also first time to its target. One nod back, a second nod up there, and a good first time side foot. Now Houghton's on the ball, and you'll see here a mistake, a slip and a fall. But Liverpool's fighting spirit is also there. Teammate comes to his aid and two of them get it back. A little turn, simple pass back, and the long searching ball forward by Gillespie, also first time. And who's that man running through the middle from Davenport's pass? No, not Davenport, sorry. It's the man himself, Houghton, delivering an inch perfect ball along the, or just above the surface, and Beardsley's dramatic skill 
a confident finishing does the rest. A really all-round wonderful play uh, of Liverpool Football Club. Now look here. Here's the man jumping, Strachan, Manchester United, and he wins that header. Again, a searching ball forward from Bruce. Davenport it is this time, who turns. And who's the man running through the middle? Gordon Strachan, having made up 40 yards. One against one. Not the easiest position for your nerves. He pauses, calms himself, and tricks Grobler into the side of the net. That's a man who's run many miles in the service of Aberdeen, Scotland, and Manchester United, but never better than those few yards today. Gordon Strachan, Bob. Well, when it was all over on the field, the exchanges continued between rival Scottish managers Kenny Dalgleish and Alex Ferguson. United manager Ferguson, upset by the sending off of Colin Gibson, said, I don't think his tackle deserved a booking because Steve McMahon was committing the same fouls the whole afternoon. I can now understand why clubs come away from Anfield biting their tongues, knowing they have been done by the referees. You need a miracle to win in the intimidating atmosphere here. Kenny Dalgleish, cradling his six-week-old daughter Lauren and overhearing Ferguson's remarks, shouted to reporters, you might as well talk to my baby, you get more sense out of her 